Я должен вам сказать, что стремительно кончается количество тех стран, которые могут поговорить и с той, и с другой стороной конфликта. Скоро Венгрия станет единственной, видимо, страной в Европе, которая сможет поговорить со всеми. This is my video update on this Friday, midday, July the 5th. Let's talk about some news. And let's start things off with the elections in the UK. Sunak. Sunak conceded defeat and from what I understand, this guy is a YouTuber and he was holding a big like L right behind Sunak as he conceded defeat. The Tories got clobbered. They got absolutely clobbered. Sunak, though, is going to keep his seat. So he may not be moving to the USA just yet, much to Sunak's dismay. But... Uh, but Keir Starmer, yeah, that is going to be the new prime minister. Keir Starmer. And boy, is that guy boring. He is boring. I listened to his victory speech. So I was like, <laughs> I was like falling asleep, man. That guy is boring, but that's what makes him dangerous, is the fact that he is so boring. He's a boring globalist. <laughs> and his goal... His job number one for the UK is to is to re-enter the European Union to undo Brexit. That is Stammer's globalist task. Farage won his uh, his region district. He's going to be entering Parliament, I believe, for the first time in. Eight tries. Uh, Galloway, I think Galloway lost his seat, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, yeah, it was it was Labour with over 400 seats, and uh, the Tories came in second. Actually, have the results bookmarked here. 410 for Labour. I think 131 for the Conservatives. 61 for the Lib Dems, the Liberal Dems. Reform got, ten, got 13. Reform got 13. And the SNP got 10. Now, I was reading an article this morning which claimed that reform got something like a million more votes than the Lib Dems, but they end up with 13 seats and Lib Dems 61. How, how does this work? I don't know. I'm going to have to ask Alexander when we do a video update on the UK elections. I don't understand how reform could be the second party, according to polling, could be the second party in the UK, at a minimum the third, the third largest party in the UK, but they end up with less seats than the Liberal Dems. I don't get it. I don't understand it. But anyway, Prime Minister Keir Stammer. Oh boy, buckle up, UK. It's going to be a rough ride with this guy as prime minister. Not that it was easy under Sunak. But uh, look, Sunak, Alensky cursed. We've got to look at the, the bright side of things. Sunak is the latest Alensky curse victim. And that's a big one. That is a big Alensky curse right there. Should have never hugged Alensky, Rishi. But you couldn't resist, could you? That Alensky number five, irresistible. So let's, uh, let's talk about the United States and the, the coup, for lack of a better word. I don't have another word to describe it, but the, 
the coup that is taking place to get Biden to step aside. The media, they are going after Joe. They are really going after Biden in a big, big way, as are the donors. I was reading a Financial Times article which said that the donors prefer Gretchen Whitmer. They'll also be fine with Gavin Newsom and Kamala Harris. They're okay with Kamala Harris, though. She was third on the list. Top of the list for the donors, according to the Financial Times, is Gretchen Whitmer. Second place, Gavin Newsom. The donors, they want Biden gone. They absolutely want him out. CNBC says, Disney heiress, wealthy Democrat donors say, Democratic donors say they won't finance the party until Joe Biden drops out. The Washington Post is reporting that Biden faces a grim ultimatum. Fellow Democrats are reportedly pressing the U.S. president to either prove his, fit, his fitness for office or step aside. Top donor says Biden has five days to prove himself. Prove your fitness or step aside. That's right, Joe. The donors are telling you drop and give me 20 <laughs> or step aside, you dog-faced pony soldier. <laughs> I remember when Biden challenged, challenged someone to a push-up contest, someone that was at one of his campaign events. Remember that? When Biden said something, something along the lines of, I can do more push-ups than you. Let's go. Let's go right now. Let's do some push-ups. You know what it reminds me of? If there are any Seinfeld watchers or Seinfeld fans, remember the, the episodes that Seinfeld would have with the, the Men Mendelbaums? I think that was their name. Lloyd Bridges. They played this family called the Mendelbaums, and, and they would challenge everyone to, to contests of uh, strength. And the Mendelbaums were old. They were older uh, guys, older characters in Seinfeld. And everything came down to a contest of strength. <laughs> that's, what, that's what Biden kind of reminds me of, the mental bombs. Drop, drop and give me 20. I will prove that I'm stronger than you. Anyway, the donors want Biden to prove his fitness. I don't know how he's going to do that, but uh, we will see. I think he's going to give an interview, if I'm not mistaken, to Stephanopoulos. I believe Stephanopoulos is what, ABC News? And he's going to give an interview with Stephanopoulos, I believe, today. But the interview is going to air on, uh, on Saturday. They're, they're going to edit it, and it's going to air on, on Saturday. But uh, Ron Klain, he is saying, we are the Democratic Party. These people don't get to decide to oust a pro-labor, a pro pro-people president. And he's responding to this article, major Democratic donors devise plans to pressure Biden to step aside. President Biden appears intent on remaining on the ballot while wealthy donors are discussing plans to put their money elsewhere. The New York Times is reporting that Biden wants more sleep and less work. The U.S. president reportedly made the admission during a meeting with Democratic governors aimed at bolstering support for his campaign. CNN is reporting the same. Biden, Biden told governors that he wants more sleep. After, I think CNN said after 8 p.m., Biden told governors that he's, he's out. <laughs> he's going uh, sleepy poo, <laughs> sleepy bye-bye <laughs> after 8 o'clock, something like that. I forgot the, the title from CNN. But uh, yeah, the mainstream media, they are going after Biden in a big way. They want him gone, the, the donors. They want him gone. The New York Times article says this. After Governor Josh Green of Hawaii, a physician, asked Mr. Biden questions about the status of his health, Mr. Biden replied that his health was fine. Quote, listen to this. Quote, it's just my brain, he added, according to three people familiar with what took place, a remark that some in the room took as a joke, but at least one governor did not and was puzzled by it. Was it a joke? I have no idea if that's a joke or if Biden was being serious. It's just my brain. 
I don't know. Maybe it was a joke. Maybe that's Biden's humor. The Economist, they have an article with the title, No Way to Run a Country. And you can see the image. Actually, this is on the cover of The Economist. You can see the image right there on, uh, on the screen. Yeah. The Washington Post is reporting that, that even Trump, that even Trump wants Biden to stay in office, which means that the Democrats should do everything in their power to remove Biden. You see what the Washington Post is doing there? Trump wants Biden to stay in the race. It sure seems they want Biden to stay on the ticket, David Axelrod, a longtime Democratic strategist, told the Post. They think he's vulnerable and they like where they're at. You can see they are not excited at all about the prospect of him, of him leaving the race. So the Washington Post, Post is also trying to push Biden out of, uh, of the candidacy for president in 2024 by running an article and this quote from Axelrod. Axelrod is, is he Clinton or Obama or both? I think he was the advisor to Obama. But maybe he also advised the Clintons as well. Anyway, they run his quote saying that, uh, that Trump wants Biden to stay because they believe that they can easily defeat Biden. They don't want someone new. The Washington Post runs this article. And this is all being done because the minute you say that Trump wants Biden to stay. The reaction is, oh, my God, if Trump wants, wants Biden to stay, then we really got to get rid of Biden. <laughs> right. So that's what the Washington Post is doing there. Oh, man. And Biden gave a radio interview, not a TV interview. He gave a radio interview so as to not be to not be seen. But uh, in this, this should be my clown world, by the way, in this radio interview, Biden said that he is proud to be the first black woman to serve with a black president. That is what Biden said in this radio interview. He means Kamala Harris is what he was trying to get at. At least that's, that's what I think he was trying to say. But in classic Biden style, he, uh, he messed it up. He messed it up. He met Kamala, but you know, Biden, Biden got confused. Maybe this radio interview was was before 10 o'clock or after 4 p.m. And that's why Biden could not get the, the script, the lines outright, out right. He couldn't read them outright. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, but Biden's also affecting my brain, you see. <laughs> oh, man, it's contagious, the Biden effect. <laughs> it's affecting me as well. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So there's going to be a NATO summit on July 9th in the United States. Is Biden going to be the president for that or is it going to be Kamala Harris? Are they going to allow Biden to take part in this NATO event? Because there are going to be a whole lot of, of opportunities for Biden gaffes at this NATO event, right? They are taking a huge risk by, uh, by allowing Biden to take part in this NATO event. Let's cross. I have no idea where I am. I'm just walking. <laughs> I'm just a walking. Trying to stay out of the, the sun because it's another hot day here in paradise. So who do you think's gonna win out? Let me know in the comments down below. Is the Biden team led by Jill and Hunter are they going to manage to keep Biden in the race or will the donors win out? You know my position on this. It's all about the money. If they can find a way to keep the money flowing, 
and to keep the money that they've received from the donors and to transfer it over, then Biden's gone. If they can't figure out a way to, to transfer the money over, and if they convince the donors to, to just give Joe one more chance, come on, donors, don't abandon Joe. If they can do that, then, then they'll stick with, with Joe. That's my take on this. It's all about the money. Even though Ron Klain says it's not about the donors, the donors don't decide who the candidate's going to be. No, the donors decide. <laughs> the donors are gonna decide who it's going to be, plain and simple. They always, they always do, they always will. And it's gonna be no different in, in this case as well, in this instance. So The Economist had a summit called Economist, I think it's called Economist Insight 2024. And Dora Bakoyanis took, took part in this economist event. Now, if you don't know who Dora Bakoyanis is, everyone from Greece knows, Greece and Cyprus knows who Dora is. She is the sister of the current prime minister of Greece, Mitsotakis. Her father was the prime minister of Greece as well. She was the foreign minister at one point in time. She was the minister of culture as well. She was the mayor of Athens, and she was also the mayor of Athens during the Olympics in, in Athens. And uh, she, is, she is political royalty in Greece, globalist political royalty in, uh, in Greece. Her son, I believe, yeah, her son was also the mayor of Athens. So she comes from one of the most powerful political families in, uh, in Greece. And she was taking part in this Economist Insight event. And she said, now when she speaks, She's, I don't want to say she's speaking on behalf of, but what she's saying is, is reflective of what the, the elite globalists in Greece are thinking. And she said at this event that, speaking about Project Ukraine, that Trump, if he wins, and now it's looking like he will win, if he wins the the money to Ukraine will stop. She said that. And then she said that Ukraine will have to give in. She didn't elaborate on, on that statement, but uh, Ukraine in this conflict is going to have to give in. And then she said that the collective West and Greece they should, have, uh, they should have pressed Ukraine to honor the Minsk agreements. They should have honored the Minsk deal. Project Ukraine was a big mistake. That is basically what Dora Bakoyanis said. And, uh, and then she finished off her statement by saying, you know what? We messed up. We should have honored the Minsk agreement. Good deal, that Minsk agreement. But uh, that's history now. <laughs> that's, that's how she finished off her statement. That's, that's in the past. What can we do? Oh, well, oopsie, oopsie doopsie. We didn't honor the Minsk agreement. Hundreds of thousands of people, people's lives lost, a country destroyed, Europe destroyed. That's all in the past. So let me play you a bit of, of what Dora Pakoyani said at this Economist event. Probably uh, the war in Ukraine is not the first priority for uh, Trump. So I don't believe that the money is, uh, will be flowing towards Ukraine which means practically that uh, Ukraine has to give in one way or another. Uh, 
if it is politically covered or not, I don't understand. I agree with President Gül that we should have never been there if we would take much more seriously the Minsk Agreement and work on the Minsk Agreement, but that's history. Yeah. Interesting admission from the globalist Greek political class. Let's, uh, let's talk about Putin's statements in Kazakhstan, in Astana. He was speaking to the media and the Russian president. He said that, that there can be no ceasefire in Ukraine unless uh, Ukraine makes permanent concessions, takes permanent steps to, to ensure that that they're going to honor whatever, whatever negotiations and deals are going to be talked about or have been talked about. No temporary moves, no temporary concessions. Ukraine has to, has to show that they're, that, they're, that they're taking permanent steps towards peace. I imagine what Putin is talking about when he says this is that Ukraine is going to have to pull all of their military back out of Zaporozhye out of Kherson, out of Donbass, and, uh, and that could be the beginnings of what could be negotiations and some sort of, uh, of a ceasefire, but it has to be permanent in nature. Putin said that. He, he also said that, that he finds Trump's uh, statements about finding peace in Ukraine, he finds this as as positive, he takes these statements from Trump seriously. He did say that there are no real details as to, as to what Trump's plan is. We don't really know what Trump has in mind, Putin said, but he sees this as a, as a positive and uh, he does not brush off. Trump's statements when he says that he would like to, to end the conflict in 24 hours. Now, Putin takes Trump's statements seriously. Alensky, he starts demanding things from Trump. You see the difference? The difference between a leader, a diplomat, a statesman, and a comedian clown? that plays the piano with his pee-pee. I mean, you, you understand the difference. Alensky right away starts demanding things from Trump. Show me your, your plan. How are you going to do this? We don't take this seriously. Lashing out at Trump. And Putin, who's relaxed and calm and says, look, this is a good, positive uh, step in the right direction. We're waiting for more details, but yeah, we take the statements from Trump very seriously because he is the front runner for the president of the United States. And uh, we should take his statements seriously. And it's good that he's saying that he wants peace. Big difference between Putin and Alensky. And finally, Putin also said that a good start to, to negotiations or a possible start to negotiations or a ceasefire in Ukraine is the Istanbul Agreement. Istanbul Plus. That could be a foundation to start negotiations. Uh, the document is there. It was initialed. Boris Johnson flew into Kiev and he scuttled the whole thing, but there is a, a foundation. To, to base negotiations on. So he did say that as well. Here's a direct quote from Putin with regards to Trump. He said uh, he takes his statements quite seriously. And then he said, quote, of course, I'm not familiar with his possible suggestions on how he is going to do this. And this, of course, is the key question. But I have no doubt that he says it sincerely and we support it. Yeah, that's diplomacy. That's how you negotiate. This is how you start to negotiate. Oh, man.
I do hope that the, uh, that the adults can really start to negotiate, that we get some adults in the, in the right positions of power so that we can start to get real negotiations and get to, to a peace. I don't know if I want to cross over. It is hot. That's why I don't walk that much because of the heat. All right, let's walk that way. So Alensky's interview with Bloomberg, we've got more more information, more statements from Alensky and what he said during this interview. And Alensky, he told the Bloomberg reporter that Putin is afraid to leave Russia. No joke. <laughs> that is what Alensky said. Alensky leaves Ukraine because he's afraid to stay in Kiev, right? <laughs> he wants to be out of Kiev as much as possible because Alensky is is frightened of the, uh, the Banderites. So he tries to leave Kiev whenever he gets the chance. He's out of Kiev. He tells Bloomberg that Putin is afraid to leave Russia. Well, at the very moment that this interview is taking place, Putin is in Kazakhstan at the SCO summit, meeting with Xi Jinping. And last week, Putin was in, in North Korea. Then he went to Vietnam. He was also in China as well. But he's afraid to, to leave. He is afraid to leave. Uh, okay, I'm going to have to go up this way. There's all kinds of construction taking place there. Scrap that plan. Let's walk this way. We're going in circles. <laughs> we are going in circles. So anyway, Putin is afraid to leave Russia, according to Alensky. Projection. Projection, but not, not projecting in a way that, uh, that he's saying that he's afraid to leave Ukraine. Alensky's projecting in a way by saying that he wants to leave Kiev. Putin wants to stay in Russia, but uh, Putin's afraid to leave Russia. But Alensky is basically saying, you know, I, I can't wait to get out of Kiev because I'm, I'm terrified staying here. <laughs> That's pretty much what's, what's going on here. I don't, I don't know if you can call it projection. But the, you know what I'm saying. You guys know what I'm saying. He also said that, uh, that Russia is zero. Zero without Ukraine and Belarus. <laughs> he said it's zero. It's a zero country if it doesn't have Ukraine and Belarus. Has he seen a map <laughs> of Russia? Has Zelensky seen how big it is? But he says it's zero. Zero without Ukraine. He said that as well. And then the big statement from Zelensky. I think this is the important statement. He said that Ukraine has 14 brigades ready to go. That is what he said. But unfortunately, these 14 brigades that he has have no weapons. No weapons. Because the West is slow in arming these brigades. Yep. From the Kiev Independent, 14 brigades unarmed. Aid arriving too slowly. Alensky comments on battlefield situation. Quote, we have 14 brigades who do not have the necessary weapons that have already been approved and discussed. Yeah, 14 brigades. And that's why they can't go on the offensive, according to Alensky. 
we need more money and more weapons. It's never going to end. It's never going to end, everybody. Alensky's never going to stop asking for more, more money and more weapons. Just two months ago, you got $61 billion from Congress. Two weeks later, the European Union promised $50 billion. In February, the EU also allocated another $50 billion. That's $161 billion in six months. Not even six months, five months. And now Alensky is saying, well, we have 14 brigades, but we just need more money, more money and more weapons. If we just had the money and the weapons, well, those brigades would be, would be ready to, to launch an offensive. It's never going to end. He's never going to stop asking. Okay, let's see if I can get onto the bridge. So, Orban is rumored, rumored, this is important, it's just a rumor, but he's rumored to be going to, to Moscow today to meet with Putin. This is just a rumor. I believe this rumor originated with with a Twitter X post from a journalist in Hungary. But you know, the, the media in Ukraine, they are also saying that this may be true. Orban to meet with Putin in Moscow following Ki Kiev visit. This is according to the Kiev Independent. The journalist, Sabolix Pani said tomorrow, the, I believe this is a Hungarian journalist, said Viktor Orban, tomorrow Viktor Orban is expected to travel to Moscow just days after he paid a surprise visit to Kiev on Tuesday. Multiple Western and CEE officials independently told me Foreign Minister Peter Siarto, Lavrov's buddy goes too. What a start. I don't know, is this, is this guy a Hungarian journalist or is he... Or is he from somewhere else? I don't know. I don't know. But I think this is where the talk about Orban, the rumor about Orban originated, is from this tweet. But uh, Ukraine media is picking this up, and they're saying that Orban is indeed going to, to Russia. And EU officials are freaking out. Yeah, they are freaking out. How dare Orban? meet with Alensky and then meet with Putin. What's he trying to do? Trying to, trying to get a ceasefire? Trying to get some peace? How dare Orban work to, uh, to get some peace? <laughs> we don't want no peace. <laughs> that is what the EU officials are saying. They're freaking out. They are freaking out. Charles Michel, the, the soon-to-be ex-president of the EU Council, he posted on Twitter X, the EU rotating presidency has no mandate to engage with Russia on behalf of the EU. The European Council is clear. Russia is the aggressor. Ukraine is the victim. No discussions about Ukraine can take place without Ukraine. And Donald Tusk, the prime minister of Poland, said the rumors about your visit to Moscow cannot be true. PM Viktor Orban. Or can they? Yeah, they're freaking out. Charles Michel. You guys know who Charles Michel is, right? The outgoing EU Council president. He also, he also had, uh, had a small role in Monty Python's The Holy Grail. He was the, the French soldier in the castle that would say, I fought in your general direction. <laughs> Isn't that what he said? <laughs> As King Arthur was trying to, to enter the castle. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That wasn't Charles Michel, but he looks like Charles Michel. <laughs> oh boy. So yeah, they're, they're flipping out, man. They are flipping. No peace. The EU 
political globalist class, they're allergic to peace. <laughs> they don't want any peace in Ukraine. How dare Orban push for peace? How dare he? How dare you? All right. Let's do some clown worlds and wrap this video up. Should we go back to, to Professor Biden for some clown worlds? Why not? Biden and, and Kamala, they were celebrating the 4th of July at some event and Kamala introduced the incredible the extraordinary Joe Biden to speak to the uh, to the crowd to briefly speak to the to the audience in attendance, and this is a Fourth of July celebration, right? And Biden's first words were, "Ho ho ho!" <laughs> I, I don't get it, man. Christmas, 4th of July? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, maybe. Maybe it's like a Christmas special 4th of July event. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me play you the video. And I'll be back. And we give thanks to our commander-in-chief, the, the President of the United States, the extraordinary President of the United States, Joe Biden! Ho, ho, ho! Happy Independence Day! All right. That was, that was Biden saying ho, 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 happy 4th of July. And, uh, and do I have any more clown worlds? Here we go. It looks like YT has banned the channels of Russian singers Shaman, Paulina Gargarina, Grigori Lips, Oleg Gazmanov, and various others. And the reason YT banned these accounts is because Lithuania asked them to at the request of Lithuania because they were placed on the, on the sanctions list a couple of weeks ago, and then Lithuania probably petitioned the social media platforms to ban their accounts because these people are sanctioned. These artists, these singers are sanctioned. You know my feeling on this. I think it's kind of dumb to, to go after artists in general. You shouldn't go after artists, singers, especially. It also makes you look weak. I don't, I don't understand why, why Lithuania does this. Well, obviously the United States, Blinken, called up Lithuania and told them to, to make this request, obviously. That's, that's how it happened. But uh, it just makes you look weak. I don't understand why you do this. Just leave it alone because it's a sign of weakness. It's a sign that you're losing. And why, it, it, why would you want to show weakness? Why would you want to show panic if you're playing this, this geopolitical chess match? You know, if you're the United States, if you're the European Union, you want to try to show strength, even if you are getting pummeled and you're losing really badly, which you are, at least try to, try to make it seem like you're not and try to make it look like you're not panicking and you're not desperate. So I just don't understand why they do stuff like this. If it was, if it was me, if I was in, in their position, even though we're losing and we're losing bad, I would, I would say don't do these types of things because it just makes us look, look really, really desperate. Anyway, that's the, the clown world. That's the video. I have no idea where I am. The Duran.locals.com. We are on Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, Telegram, Rockfin, and... Twitter X, go to the Duran shop, pick up some, hey, my some special edition. Very hey, channel. yeah, Very channel. Yes. awesome. 
Yeah, of course, Thank man. You so Thank, you. Nice to meet you, my Thank you. Thank you. Thank nice you very much. Nice. Take care. <laughs> you don't mind if your voice is on on the video. Okay, man. Take care. Bye bye. So uh, what else? Yeah, pick up some some merch at the Durant shop. Take care, everybody.